Okay. So Matt, tell me what you've learned about this land. Tell me all about it. Just imagine I don't know anything. Okay. Well, uh, first things that jump to mind would be that Islam is the youngest religion so far in the major world of the major world religions, and it started with Muhammad, who got a who went into a cave and got an angelic vision from Gabriel in 610 AD and he was receiving the words of God through Gabriel and then he took this message from Gabriel from God to Mecca to tell the people of it most of the people however they did not take kindly to what he said or they didn't believe him some did, however, and they went with him to uh, Yathrib, now titled Medina, and this is called the Hijra. You're doing great. Relax. <laughs> and look at me. Forget the cameras there. Okay. All right. Um, so, Islam is a religion focused around the Quran, which is the collective words of what um, Mohammed received from Gabriel. That's great. And Islam is a religion that is focused around adher um, submission to God and only God, Allah. And Muslims is what they are called. They're followers of Islam. The Muslims, uh, they're holy place is called the mosque and they worship five times a day towards Allah and but they have a special service on Fridays and the people within the mosque that uh, do their jobs are the muezzin, the imam, and the khatib and they are signaled to prayer five times a day from minarets at the top where they make noises to let them know it's time. And uh, Islam is a religion that has roots in Judaism from Abraham. And so does Christianity, but that's mm -hmm. not. That's so, great. Um, Islam, uh, they have the ways of worship from praising God to reciting the Quran. And they have festivals. Terrific. I mean, he talks about their history, their major beliefs, some of the, the ways that they worship, and that's great. I think a Muslim would really appreciate how knowledgeable you are. Probably the hardest part of studying any of, the, any of these religions, given the sources we've had, is to describe their morality. How is this religion a, a guide for life, for a person who is Muslim? How does it help them make choices and lead their life? Well, are you posing that as a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, they take um, their, some of their morality comes from the Hadith, hadith and the Quran itself, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. and. Morality wasn't really talked about within our book, I believe, but Islam, they know that all things are made from God, such as, um, that's the reason that they're so, they've contributed so much to the world through scientific understanding, is because they realize that everything is made by God and everything is in essence. I don't know if they would go that far, but they did say everything in essence is God. Almost. Okay, great. What, is, what are the Hadith talked about those? What are they? Oh, um, the Hadith, um, if I remember correctly, was um, the, the expert scholars or religious experts took interpretations from the Quran and put it in the Hadith. You're sort of thinking of Sharia law, oh, like the okay. four schools, yeah. but, but that's that's really important. Just the idea that the, the written sources needed to be interpreted by people was an important idea. The Hadith was another source. We have the Quran, and you explain what that is. 
The Hadith was another source. Do you remember what that was or no? I do not. Okay. Say again more clearly exactly what the Quran and the Muslim Holy Book is. What do they believe about it? Well, the Quran and the Holy Book of Islam or Islam is the spoken word of God and it's it's different from the other religions, holy books, because they are the only religion who believes that it is made, it is not made from like the 66 scholars, or 66 books of the Bible that people wrote those. They actually believe God gave them the Quran. Mm -hmm. Great. What are some of the things that the Quran teaches Muslims about how they should lead their lives? For example, how should people dress? What kind of help, like, for clothing, according to the Quran? Well, the Quran says that they should dress modestly, um, not exposing much skin, and they have a very high respect for men and women's sexuality and their separate, like, the separation of them. Like, in the, uh, wedding we heard about the example was that the, both the uh, men and the women were on opposite sides of the room and they were dressed modestly and only only the the groom or the husband um, I don't know if there's a different name for it in their culture but um, he is allowed to go to the women's side but only for certain reasons as to see the family or something. That's great, I didn't even remember that from the discussion. <laughs> That's terrific. You spoke about those minarets and that some sort of noises would be emit from that so-called <laughs> people to prayer. What is the call to prayer? Like if you were in a Muslim country, what would you be hearing five times a day coming out of those minarets? Oh, um, chants, maybe. Sort of, yeah. What are you chanting? <laughs> that I wouldn't be able to tell you. You kind of already answered the question. What is what? What do Muslims usually use as the substance of prayer? Where do the words of the prayer come from? They're reciting the Quran. Pretty much. Yeah, great. Okay. What is the Hajj or pilgrimage in Islam? The Hajj? Um, is that the pilgrimage back to Mecca? Put it in a sentence rather than a question. Oh, the Hajj is a pilgrimage to Mecca that the Muslims must make at least once in a lifetime if they can. Great. What about the other so-called five pillars? You talked about prayer, the Hajj, you know what that is. What are some of those other things called the five pillars that are really important to Muslims in terms of what they practice? The five pillars of Islam has to do with morality, I believe. And one of them would be, um, I, I would believe, reciting the Quran. Yeah, that'd be daily, so there's daily prayer, the Hajj. How about Zakat? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> what do Muslims have to do with their money? How do they regard money? Like, we Americans, when we make money, and we buy things, we think, this is my stuff. It's all mine. Oh, they're more about giving to the mosque. And who do they give to? Who do they have to give to and how much? They give, um, well, they give it to the mosque, I would believe, the muezzin at uh, maybe 15 or 20 percent of what they make. And, well, two or wait, two oh, wait, no. It was, it was, um, <laughs> I remember Jenna talking about this. That yeah, probably was. was her. And uh, she said that you have to give so you have to give like I think it was maybe it was pound for pound of what you have, or it was like if you have sheep and you're donating that to the mosque, then you have to give you have to give so much sheep, like to the mosque. You can't just change up what you want to give. That's right. I've forgotten about that. The, the basic message is you have to give something, and it's a certain percentage. You can do 2.5% or 1 40th is the, the amount. Oh, 1 40th. So what happens to that money? And this is so, so important to Muslims. They're constantly giving this money because they, they view it as a really important duty. Where does it go? To building more mosques or to helping the poor. To helping the poor. That's the important thing. Great. Okay, your personal view of Islam. 
I picked your brain too much. I'm sorry. I wasted a lot of time. What do you think of all this? I think Islam. I think the it's it's a great religion for the most part, except for the parts where radical Muslims, but the, that's radical people are never religion. But mm -hmm. I believe that they've donated or they've contributed so much to society and based on their ethic ethics of uh, how God is everything, I see no reason why they wouldn't keep contributing yes. and advancing their knowledge. You talked about that a little bit in the outline of your paper, that you've religion can in some ways be a hindrance to modern society many religions have made some contribution. So go into that a little bit in detail. What are some of the scientific contributions Islam has made? Well, Islam has made um, uh, contributions to astronomy and geography and calculus and some of the contributions of religion other than the scientific ones would be a sense of unity among the people mm -hmm. as well as maybe a bringing back from some of the things that we've lost such as within indigenous religions they're they're more communal and they have oral traditions whereas we've kind of lost that today in America. Interesting. Why is that a loss? Are we, why are we, could the argument that be made that we're better off focusing on the individual and kind of abandoning the communal aspect of human society. Why is it important to bring that communal aspect, that unity aspect back? I believe any psychiatrist will tell you that so much isolation can prove to cause depression and even suicidal thoughts in more extreme cases. Um, so it would be beneficial to have communal activities in your life and to want to be around people to avoid such things. Well, so as a psychologist, how would you sort of wrapping up and maybe one sort of summary statement now that we've arrived at the end of the semester and you've studied religions, how would you sort of sum up the psychological value of religions? The, psych uh, the psychological value of religions can be placed around we all want to know where we came from and how we fit in this, how we fit into this world and how we should go about practicing morality or having morality. And religions, how do they answer that need? Religions give you well, if you are religious, your God gives you morality to live by and he answers those questions for you. Whereas from my own personal standpoint, I can't, or I can agree with that, that they have, that they believe that there are gods that tell them this and how to live their lives, but I wouldn't be able to say that that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not even asking the question, is it true? You're just recognizing this is what it does, yeah. psychologically. So what would be a hindrance that any one of the religions we've studied creates to modern society? Well, we had uh, the Middle Ages with Christianity where they burned books and halted um, the furtherance of scientific understanding. And I believe that any religion when it becomes too radical, any religious follower when it becomes too radical, can go and do things that they believe that they're doing for a greater cause, but really they're harming others or themselves. And define radicalism just in a sentence or two. Well, in the context that I'm using radicalism, I would believe it to be any, any person of a religious group who is not of the norm within that, and they take things to a new extreme, and they they go out about enforcing their views on others. Cool. Thank you, Matt, for all the time. <laughs>